Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. I'm sure my Christmas Eve started just like everybody else's, and that is with a 13 mile walk to start the day. Here we go, are you ready? And 13. The reason why it was 13 miles is a story for another day. But ultimately I was trying to get some additional miles in so that, so that I could walk my 120 miles uh, in December challenge. And as I started today, I just, from, from the get-go... I couldn't get comfortable, right? Like, it was cold, so I had some extra layers on, and that wasn't very comfortable, and the leggings I had just kept, like, wanting to do weird things, and so I just, I wasn't comfortable. And about, you know, three or three or four miles in, I, 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 I thought to myself, <clears throat> maybe I should just stop. And go home and you know I've got I've got a few miles in and <clears throat> that seemed like a good a good choice but then I started thinking to myself why I was out walking and I started thinking about the people who currently and, and have struggled with mental illness or uh, suicidal thoughts and and what they what they feel and what I'm saying is not that I have a better understanding of what somebody is going through based on my walk today but I wanted to draw some similarities um, of things that I was thinking of throughout my walk and the first was that it was just dark and lonely and cold I live in Phoenix which is one of the most populated cities in the United States, but <clears throat> in that moment I felt alone walking through neighborhoods and that I didn't have any resources available to me and that I couldn't you know, reach out and, and get help if I needed it. The way I structured this walk was I was gonna do two out and backs. The first was 4.5 miles out 4.5 miles back to a central location and then another out to back to for a total of 13. And on the way back, I coordinated uh, an opportunity to meet up with somebody who would walk the final four miles with me. And in the marathon, ultra marathon world, doing that is um, usually called, you know, you're, you're running with a, with a pacer. And they do this because there are times where, you know, um, after running for, for hours on end, you're tired, you're, you're dragging, um, hopefully not hallucinating, but getting this person with you can help keep you on track. And when I met them at the central location, I got some hydration, I got some, some gummy snacks, and then went went out with this individual and once we started I, I was feeling good again and I kind of forgot about my uncomfort um, and you know was, was able to, to get going and then um, the hydration and the gummy snacks and the calories and the sugar kicked in and then not that I didn't need that pacer anymore but I was able to um, get back on my own feet and if if that individual wasn't there I would have been okay and I started thinking about how this might apply 
to our lives, whether whether we're struggling with mental illness or not. Um, and first, if if you're struggling with your own mental health, I think it's important that no matter how how dark or cold or alone that you you may feel, that there are people out there to to assist you. There are resources out there to help you. And so find your pacer, that person that lifts you up and and keeps you on track when you're struggling and reach out to them when you need it. Find those resources that give you energy as the the hydration and and the sugar was for me. What are those tasks that bring you a little bit of joy to your day so that you can keep on going? Is it getting out of bed? Is it getting dressed? Is it getting showered? Is it seeing sunlight? Whatever helps you bring a little bit of joy or happiness to your life, do that. And then for those of you that may not be struggling with mental illness, as we've previously discussed, we know people that are, unfortunately. So how? So ask yourself the question of how can I be a pacer to somebody else? How can I be their bright spot in the day to help them along their journey and to provide a little bit of sunlight, sunshine, or light to their darkest day? This holiday season, let us remember that each of us is going through things that others may not know about, that even the strongest of us may be struggling, that each of us have the opportunity and can make the decision to act and be a beacon of light to others. So not just this holiday season, but in all that you do, choose to do, be, and inspire good. Merry Christmas.